In a previous video, I've showed a review of the rigid generator with the Yamaha engine. I'm going to show you how I hook it up to the 240 volt outlet. So this is where I have the four prongs. And for that, I have a 10 by four. So you can see I got it from Home Depot. So you can buy the 10 by four cable and you can buy uh, for the amount you need. And also you need these two, um, the two sockets, one on this side and that goes into the, um, the house. So this one is going to be, I'll put the details on what uh, these uh, sockets are and uh, I'll show you how I hook it up. So on the generator side, you will have this plug-in and you can see how this one has an L-shaped connector right there. So that L goes in to match the one over there. And so that goes in here. And this one is going to plug in to the wall next to the garage. On the side of the garage, I have hooked up uh, this box, which has the same connector. Um, it is the L uh, 14-30. You can see it's a 30 amp connector there for 125 and 240, 250 uh, volts and um, this one is the where I connected my other end from the generator so you have to match the plug and and that goes in So here, here is what I have uh, on the uh, breaker box. So I had to extend my breaker box because we put an addition and this original breaker box was running out of a uh, number of circuits. So most of these are uh, right now have been moved to a smaller breaker box. And what I did was I took the opportunity to make this uh, a standby generator breaker box uh, circuit electrical box for me. So what I have here is I have this yellow one is the generator input. So you can see my input to the generator comes on this one from outside um, and it feeds into this one. And you can see that I have an interlock uh, switch here. So you can either get a transfer switch or an interlock um, uh, actually interlock uh, switch what it does is both are code uh, compliant so you you will pass the inspection and I had to get an inspection for this either way not for the generator but the additional panel that I put in and also the inspection while we were uh, putting an addition to the house so either way so what happens is you won't be able to uh, turn this off or you know you don't want to feed the uh, the generator uh, electricity back to the grid so that's what it does is interlock switch and what it does is you it will lock you to either feed from the generator and it's now turned off as you can see so nothing is feeding from the generator even if you turn the generator on and whereas my utility power is on so the utility power is coming from the other box so this lock is unless you turn this main power off to the box you won't be able to slide this in and this locks this generator input to be um, not be turned on so uh, that's what it is I'm going to open this box just to show for those who are planning to uh, put in an interlock switch now this this little plate and the screws actually was not cheap but it was much cheaper than a transfer uh, switch so this was like, I think uh, when I did it back in 2012, 13, so almost uh, eight uh, years ago, uh, this was like $60. And I will see how much these cost nowadays. So here, it, how it looks like the interlock switch, you can see this is 
this one is the generator power coming in and that's the 30 uh, uh, amp uh, switch I have a double pole so and it feeds to the two sides of the panel or the two uh, uh, the the uh, uh, 240 volts uh, so that's the one I connect to the generator and if you want to see I have another video of which generator I'm using and how I use it so either way this plate is is going in in conjunction with the other so I got two plates with the interlock switch and here is the other plate so if I look at the back of this uh, box panel you will see uh, you will see how this one integrates so it's basically uh, three screws and it locks the the panel so that you can't switch between the main and um, the generator power and uh, that's all to it but this uh, actually for sixty dollars it helped me a lot because I didn't have to put a separate uh, in uh, the separate uh, generator uh, transfer switch which is more expensive I think those are around uh, over three hundred dollars and you can only switch to a number of circuits in my case you can see I have uh, quite a bit of circuits which I can power on to the generator and these are the ones I have put uh, in the in the uh, in the smaller box and I have left the other ones which are non important in the house to go into the main circuit breaker so this is where um, and this is where it's feeding to my uh, this is a 60 amp switch uh, which feeds to the generator panel or I, I call it generator panel it's just a smaller box um, so that's all means mostly you can see my air conditioners and the ovens and the electric oven and also the uh, the dryer and the cooktop those are on my my main box uh, but I have switched uh, like all the important ones so the refrigerator kitchen um, so kitchen lights and the uh, all the important lights we have even the bathroom and also the microwave can run on the generator uh, even the blower AC uh, not the air conditioner but the blower uh, for the furnace so if it's cold that's one of the reasons I put the generator is if it's too cold I can run uh, the heating because we have gas heating hope that helps if you have any questions or comments uh, you can uh, write on the comment section and uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel I have other videos um, though I do electric uh, work myself I am uh, an engineer by trade so but I am not an electrical engineer or carry license so it's don't do it at your own risk you should get a certified electrician to do this work um, but if you know what you are trying to do like putting a, a, a panel like this or an interlock switch uh, is not difficult uh, but you do have to know how the electrical circuits work so if you like the video uh, click on the like button and subscribe to my channel hope this helps